Welcome to Capital City News, your connection to Salt Lake City government. I'm your host, Poonam Kumar. The city is reevaluating the way it's determining rules for dogs and parks. To tell us more about expansion efforts and access for our canine residents, we talked to Salt Lake City Council Chair Charlie Luke. And our History Minute this week delves into the lore of Salt Lake City Cemetery. Let's start things off by looking at what's been going on in the city. The Salt Lake City Council held a public meeting on October 7th at Parkview Elementary School. Residents came to the special on-site meeting to discuss the Nine Line and West Side Master Plans. Friday, October 3rd, saw Salt Lake Sustainable Building Summit held at the Leonardo. Nationally renowned speakers and local experts got together to discuss sustainability in Salt Lake City. One of the keynote speakers was Elizabeth Craig, U.S. EPA Director of Climate Protection Partnerships. Mayor Becker was also awarded with the 2014 Craig Forrester Lifetime Achievement Award for Sustainability. The city is in the process of changing how residents with dogs can access recreation areas in the city in the hopes of better accommodating them. To tell us where we're at in the process, we went to Salt Lake City Council Chair Charlie Luke. Councilman Luke, thank you so much for talking to us today. Great to be here. So tell me a little bit about what the city is doing to expand off-leash dog park. Well, it's a great question. Um, one of the things that we really started to focus on this year is looking at the existing dog parks that we have and how to make the experience better for not only the dogs, but the uh, owners who take them there. So what we're really looking at is figuring out if the parks that we have are currently working and if, we're, if we need more parks. And so we, we convened a group of people who are avid dog supporters, people who aren't really supportive of dogs, and somebody from the county, because we do have a lot of county residents that come in to the mix as well. And so we had that working group and we just started going through a number of different um, questions and ideas and figuring out what the objectives are gonna be. And we presented to the city council a number of uh, policy goals that this group came up with. And so those are really the, the, the goals and issues that we're gonna be working off of um, for the foreseeable future when we're talking about dog parks. Okay. And as you mentioned, we have many different types of users um, at the off-leash dog parks. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what the city is doing to sort of balance and accommodate the needs of our different users? Sure. One of the things that I think the best way to do this is with predictability. If people know that if they go to a, you know, a park or if they go to an area of a park, that there's predictability that there will be a dog there or that there won't be a dog there. So one of the things that we're looking at is trying to come up with some, some predictability. And we're looking at a number of different things um, from you know, designated dog parks to other areas of, of, of our public parks that could have dog access uh, at different hours of the day, for example or different days of the week. Uh, Mill Creek Canyon in the county has done a, a really good job of doing on-off days. Those are some of the things that we're looking at right now because we feel that if we do that, that predictability will help people that don't want to be around dogs stay away without completely shutting them out of uh, the public open space. That's great. And now what are uh, some of the next steps? Uh, the next step, um, we are currently on Open City Hall. So we're, we've, we've put these statements out to the public uh, we're looking for people to comment on those things and then based on that we will um, take that information and look at how best to expand uh, the use or you know what other types of things to do. So we're really looking for comments, public right. comment right now. Open yep. City Hall is one option. Open City Hall is one. And then they can also visit? Uh, they can they can visit the, the City Council webpage. There's information there. Um, they can always email their council members. Um, that's another good way of really letting us know where people stand on this issue. Great. Well, thank you for talking to yeah, us You're today. very welcome. Thank you. And now it's time for our History Minute. The Salt Lake City Cemetery, located in the heart of the avenues, was established in 1847 with the burial of Mary Wallace. At 250 acres, it is the largest city-operated cemetery in the country. The cemetery is the final resting place of many notable Utahns, ranging from LDS church leaders and the state's most prominent politicians in history. But as with any cemetery, it's full of ghost stories and legends that have been passed down from generation to generation. One legend states that the Sundance Kid might be buried there under the headstone reading Hiram Beebe. Another is the mysterious headstone of Lily Gray that claims she was a victim of the beast. Perhaps the most interesting legend of the cemetery is that of Emo's grave, 
However, local legend states that if you were to light a candle and walk backwards around his grave three times, you'll see the face of Emo in the window of the crypt. Emo was actually Jacob E. Moritz, a local politician and the founder of the Salt Lake Brewery, who died unexpectedly on a trip to Germany in 1910. No one quite knows where the legend started, but it's well known throughout the city nonetheless. That's it for this week's Capital City News, your connection to Salt Lake City government. Be sure to tune in next time to keep up to date on what's happening in the city. For Salt Lake City TV, I'm Poonam Kumar.